Good day everyone! We are here to discuss topics about construction reports and computer application in construction management. Without further ado, to give you the construction reports, here are Mary Chris and Bien. Good day everyone! Today I'm going to discuss about construction reports and its different types. So what is construction reports? Construction reports are records to be maintained at construction site. It is a document required to prove any construction activity has taken place at site during billing or any other claims. Records or reports to be maintained at construction sites play important role in construction activities. This report or records have all the data of various construction activities carried out at site. If any additional work has been carried out and it is claimed during billing, these documents need to be produced as a proof. Maintenance of reports or records also helps during audits of construction projects at any point of time. These documents help to defend any claims such as liquidated damages or false claims or violations of any guidelines by authorities or clients. This report is very important because it includes all the important documents during the construction of any projects. Construction reports are typically formal documents that provide information about key events about the project. So there are different types of construction report or records to be maintained at construction site. The first one is the construction punch list. Punch list is generally a list of tasks or to-do items that must be done in a limited time. In U.S. construction industry, a punch list is the name of a contract document using the architecture and building trades to organize the completion of a construction project. In other places, it is commonly known as a snag list. The goal of the punch list for the contractor is to highlight and eliminate remaining issues or items left on the list before responsibility ships over to the client. So yung punch list I usually inaccurate in the final stages of a construction project and before the final walkthrough with the client. Additionally, ito ay maaari mag-include ng specifications and damages sa iba pang materials or items that occurred during construction na nangangailangan ng immediate attention. It may also include incorrect installation or aspects of the building that currently do not function as promised. So typically, ang punch list ay nag include lamang ng small fixes and it is used to ensure everything gets completed correctly. So here is a breakdown of the sections that make a successful construction punch list. The first section is the task location and description. So in this section, it is where an item or task that needs attention is written down. It is important to be as detailed as possible and include the location and description of the task. So dun sa location, this outlines where the task is located such as master bedroom, floor or kitchen. Description on the other hand is where the specific action is described such as paint touch up or broken tile to replace. Section 2 Priority Some tasks require immediate attention while others can wait. The priority range should be low, medium and high. Low Priority the task could be done last like a pile of bricks that needs to be cleaned up. On the medium priority, a noticeable issue like a wall needing a touch-up due to noticeable scratches. While on a high priority, a task that needs to be tackled immediately such as exposed wiring or a crack mirror. Labeling what is an immediate priority and what can wait will help streamline the work to meet the required deadlines. Section 3. Assigned or Point of Contact Part of creating a punch list is knowing who will tackle what. For tasks that are of high priority, it is important to assign specialists. For example, an electrician should work on any electrical issues. Section 4. Due Date Noting the due date of a task will help keep things on track. It is important to note that it will be different than the proposed completion date of a project. Aim for due dates to be at least a week before the proposed project end, so you have plenty of time to wrap up things. Section 5 Status This is essentially what's used to mark the task as done. Whether a task is complete or is still in progress, then the status should reflect this. Who is responsible for the punch list? So the owner or client, the general contractor, 
the subcontractor and the designer or architect are those people who are responsible for the punch list. The owner or client is responsible for going over the project. The general contractor, on the other hand, examines and assigns the task on the list. The subcontractor naman is in charge of updating and completing the task. The designer or architect makes sure the design follows the client's wishes. So the next type of construction report is the site inspection report. It is used by contractors following the work health and safety management plan assessment. The intent of the inspection is to benchmark the safety practices observed on site against the criteria in the checklist. It is acceptable to review a sample of items and based on the evidence that is available at that time. Assess whether the undertaking conforms to the set criteria. So, site inspections are a set of regular activities para ma-check and ma-verify the on-field compliance including safety standards. So, these construction site inspections are critical para ma-ensure that quality and safety procedures are followed correctly from the start to the end of the construction. Another type of construction report is the construction daily report. It is a summary of early and daily conditions and events at a work site on every workday prepared for the off-site project administrators. An essential document in construction projects that records the number of workers or employees and work equipment at the construction site, exact time the work began and ended, job progress, weather, accidents if any, and etc. On no work days, it reports no work today and serve as an evidence in case of disputes. The reports are built to be a standardized method for journaling or logging activities in a way that can track progress and or predict future efforts. The inclusion of certain sections of the report is up to each contractor, but a typical construction daily report will display the following. Project details, project progress, weather condition, crew or visitor time and attendance, equipment tracking, material tracking, delivery details, safety details, additional notes and comments, and signature, name, and date. Another type of construction report is the construction progress report. These reports are prepared regularly, often monthly, by the contract administrator during the construction phase and issued to the client. They will generally be a summary of the reports received and discussion held at the construction progress meetings. Construction progress reports may be a combination of minutes of construction progress meetings and reports received during those meetings, with key issues highlighted in an accompanying cover note. Alternatively, they may be a rewritten version of that information prepared specifically to suit the client's requirements. This report might include a summary of the progress made in each key area of the project. Analysis of progress against the program. An explanation of the causes of any delays. Progress photos. Analysis of key performance indicators. An assessment of any quality issues. Weather reports. Another type is the accident reporting policy and procedure. This type of report provides details about the accident, analysis of the factual data, conclusions, and the probable cause of the accident and the related safety recommendations. Most report focus on a single accident. There must be a process put in place to report accident, incident, or near misses for immediate action and to help track causes. So, in writing this report, the organizations need to identify kung alin yung kailangang i-report, kung kanina ito report and paano ito report Then, put this process into a written procedure. Reporting allows everyone to report not just injuries and accidents that have happened, but also preventative incidents such as near misses and safety observations. Another type is contract agreement. Contract agreement documents including all sets of drawings, including amendments, a copy of approval of municipality, corporation or urban development authorities need to be maintained at construction sites till the completion of construction project. These documents provide permission and guidelines for all the activities carried out at the construction site. So this document is important kasi andun yung mga permission ng authorities para ma-carried out yung isang project on a certain work site. 
Another type of construction report is the time and progress charts or CPM charts. These charts help in tracking the construction activities from time to time and help in effective planning, scheduling, and controlling the construction project's activities. These charts need to be approved from the concerned authorities. Most construction projects are very complex with many overlapping and connecting tasks. It is important to have effectively managed projects so they can be done on time with proper documentation and record keeping. This is why it is essential to have accurately planned projects so they can be managed effectively and why many construction companies use the critical path method. The critical path method in construction is a method of project scheduling that breaks down required activities using a diagram to calculate the duration required to complete each activity. The critical path method is sometimes referred to as critical path scheduling. It is commonly used by project managers to accurately plan construction projects. Using the critical path method to map out each project's activities, each activity's predecessor, and log allows project managers to calculate the total required duration of a project. So shown here is an example of time and progress chart used in any construction activity. Another type of construction report is the work orders book. All the orders given by clients to the contractors need be maintained with serial numbers, signatures, and dates. This order should be specific for works. This order should also have a compliance column. Putting all the details of the request into a work order helps businesses to stay organized and lets them plan more effectively by ensuring there's enough personnel and products or supplies necessary to complete the job. So, good day to everyone. This will be the continuation of the topic, construction reports. So, first is works diary. Works diary of a construction project should indicate contract agreement number, name of work, amount of contract, date of commencement of work, date of completion, and extension time granted. Following details need to be entered in this diary with due care are weather at site. So, ang kalagahan ng pagtala ng weather is, syempre, mayroon mga site na kapag umuulan ay natitigil ang pagtatrabaho, lalo na kung open site ito. Kadalasan, nagiging factor ito ng pagkadelay ng mga gawain kaya mahalagang may tala ito. Then, laborers employed. Mahalagang malaman ang pagkakakilanlan ng mga manggagawa sabagkat sila ang responsable sa malaking parte ng construction. Then, Important materials brought to site with their approximate quantity. Mahalagang maitala ang mga materyales sa site upang maiwasan ang pagkakawala nito. Madali rin matutukoy ang bilang nito kung sakali mababasan o magkulang sabagkat nakatala ito sa works diary. Types of transport working at site and types of tools and plants being used at site. Mahalaga ito upang matutukoy ang mga kagamitan na kakailanganin sa paggawa ng proyekto. Ito ay mahalaga rin upang maiwasan ang pagkakawala ng mga kagamitan. Important items of works completed and passed on the particular date. Mahalaga ito upang makita ang mga progreso o ang mga gawain na natapos sa tinakdang oras. And last is visits of PAV and their remarks if any. Katulad ng mga laborers, Mahalaga rin itala ang pagkakakilanlan ng mga taong pumapasok at tumalabas sa site at kung anong pakay ng pagpunta nila sapagkat responsable din sila sa mga nangyayari sa oras ng kanilang pagpunta o pagbisita. Works Passing Records This record maintains all the activities to be carried out at a construction site. It consists of an index page with the details of all items of works to be done under the contract and other page with details of progress of each works. This helps in tracking the progress of each activities of construction and helps in pre-planning for other remaining activities which starts after completion of current activity. This also helps in acquiring approvals before time for activities to be started. So, sa paggawa ng words passing records, nakasaad sa unang pahina ang detalye ng mga gawain na dapat matapos. Kasunod ay ang tala ng mga progreso ng mga gawain. 
Napakahalaga nito sapagkat sa pamamagitan nito, namumonitor ang mga natapos at hindi natapos na gawain sa partikular na araw. Ang isa pang kahalagahan nito ay nakatutulong ito sa pagpapabuti ng mga natapos na gawain at sa pamamagitan nito na isasaayos ang mga maling nagawa sa site. Next is Test Results Records. This is also an important record to be maintained at construction site as a good proof of construction quality. This record consists of tests of various materials such as cement, sand, aggregates, water, steel reinforcement used at construction site, test records of concrete cubes, concrete cylinder, slam test, and bore. These records are arranged as an index page with details of each materials and page numbers of records. Individual pages consist of each materials with their test dates and results. All the tests carried out at site or in laboratory are recorded in this record book. Sa civil engineering field, hindi na bago sa atin yung iba't ibang klaseng test na isinasagawa bago gawin yung isang proyekto. Halimbawa nito ay ang cube test, sieve analysis, slam test, moisture contents, manufacturer's test, at iba pang mga test na nakasaad sa kontrata na syempre ay may kaugnayan dun sa gagawing structure o project. Nakasaad din dito ang petsa kung kailan isinagawa ang test. Mahalaga na mayroong record ang mga resulta ng test sapagkat dito nakasalalay ang kalidad ng gagawing proyekto. Next is cement register. This record is maintained with details of receipts, daily consumptions, and remaining balance at site. This record also consists of manufacturing dates of cement, date of receipt, and test reports of cement at site or manufacturer's test reports. Bale, itong kasunod na record ay tungkol sa pag-inventory ng mga cemento na ginagamit sa site. Mahalaga ito upang matukoy kung tama ang bilang ng cemento na ginagamit upang maging maganda ang quality ng gagawing struktura o proyekto. Kasama din dito yung test reports ng semento dahil kailangang matukoy kung yung gagamitin na semento ay mataas ang kalitad o kung suited ba ito sa gagawing proyekto. Mahalagang may record ang bawat semento na ginagamit upang maiwasan ang pandaraya sa bilang ng mga ginamit na semento sa particular na araw na minsan ay nangyayari na rin naman talaga. Next is register for approval of samples. This record provides details of all samples for construction materials that has been approved or rejected by the clients. Approvals from the client is necessary for the construction materials to be used before commencement of the project. All the samples approved by the client need to be kept separately along with their test reports with approvals of the clients and contractors till the completion of the work. Bale, dito pumapasok yung pagpili ng mga gagamitin construction materials. Depende sa kagustuhan ng kliyente at syempre kung nababagay o kung pwede ba itong magamit para sa project. Ngunit nakasalalay pa rin ito sa mga test results at sa, pag, sa mapagkakasunduan nila ng contractor. Next is record of changes, deviation orders, and amendments. Many times during the construction projects, there are deviations or changes or amendments to the contract documents and work activities from time to time during the construction project as required by the clients. These changes can be in a drawing, specifications, or additional works. A record of all such deviation orders and amendments to the contract agreement together with the financial effect should be maintained along with approval or signatures of the clients. If this changes involves in any extension of time of the contract, this should also be recorded. Bale, sa isang project, hindi naman lahat ng nasa plano ay nasusunod. Merong mga pagbabago na madalas ay nangyayari habang nasa proseso ng paggawa 
Dahil laging merong room for improvements ang ating mga gagawin. Malaga ang kinagampanan ng record na ito upang maiwasan ang hindi pagkakaintindihan sa pagitan ng kliyente at kontraktor sapagkat nakatala ang mga pagbabagong ito. And last is the measurement book. The measurement book is a record for all the construction activities carried out and approved by the client. These records are important for a contractor to maintain and help during billing claims. Any extra work done is also recorded in this book with notes. So, bali may kaugnayan ito dun sa previous na record which is records of changes, deviation orders, and amendments. Pero ito naman ay mas mahalaga para sa mga contractor dahil nakasaad dito ang mga pinagkasundoan nila ng kliyente in terms of billings. Dito pumapasok ang mga bayarin na hindi nakasaad sa plano dahil sa pagbabago habang nasa proseso ng paggawa. So that's all for my report. Good day again and thank you. Good day everyone, I am Manette Pardilia and today I will present to you the computer application in construction management. Let's begin. Computer application in construction management. The management of construction projects is highly demanding and involves a wide range of tasks. Tools are needed to store and process the very large amounts of information that can be accumulated and as a result, various types of software are available for managing construction projects. So, dahil sa dami ng mga data na kailangan natin i-store and i-process, we need computer application software to make our task easier to accomplish. In the late 1950s, techniques such as PERT or Program Evaluation and Review Technique and CPM or Critical Path Method provided a basis for the computer-aided management of projects. Today, software can support project managers in all of their tasks such as coordination, documentation, and control. Let us go to coordination. The division of labor and responsibilities as well as the exchange of information and the workflow within the project must be planned, implemented, and controlled. Coordination is the function of management which ensures that different groups work together. Therefore, there is a unity of action among the employees, groups, or departments. It also brings harmony in carrying out the different tasks and activities to achieve the organization's goal. Next is documentation. The construction process has to be documented thoroughly and in real time. Why? It is because records may be required for regulatory reasons and they are needed for monitoring, for controlling, and accounting construction processes. The last one is to control. Identification of discrepancies between target and actual performance is essential to target-oriented control. All processes need to be monitored within a narrow frame to ensure effective corrective actions can be taken in particular controlling quality, cost, and program. So there are many software available which are used in civil engineering. Due to the technological revolution, the number of software serving civil engineering needs are increasing manifold. That is why it is impossible and hard for us to list all the computer application softwares needed in civil engineering field. So here's the list of engineering softwares which are frequently used by many civil engineers all around the world. We have designing softwares, project communication softwares, digital construction diary softwares, scheduling softwares, and cost control softwares. When we are talking about the designing softwares, we are pertaining to the applications which we need in designing or in planning buildings, bridges, dams, roads, and so on. Next is the project communication softwares. 
we can use these applications when we are talking about communicating or exchanging our ideas or designs or our reports as well with our co-workers, um, team members, and to different people outside our organization. Next, we have the Digital Construction Diary Softwares. It helps us in tracking and in recording all site activities with regards to our construction project. When we are talking about the scheduling softwares, it helps us in plan schedules, monitor, assign people to a specific task, and control schedules. Next, we have the cost control softwares. It is helpful for us when we are pertaining to project budget, possible revenue, and expenses for our construction project. Okay, let us go to the designing softwares. We have AutoCAD. I know that some of us are already familiar with this application software. AutoCAD is the most popular software in civil engineering world. So CAD stands for Computer Aided Drafting and AutoCAD is the most popular brand of software utilized for CAD. Most people who have heard of CAD, of AutoCAD rather, usually think about drafters or architects drawing up blueprints for buildings on the computer. However, it has infinitely more uses than just drawing up blueprints. Hindi lamang natin ginagamit ang AutoCAD application sa paggawa lang ng plano or pagdesign ng buildings. We can also use this in anything and everything in detail and to scale. Karaniwan, kapag sinabi sa atin na AutoCAD, ang mapasok agad sa isip natin ay mga civil engineers lamang. But architects and drafters also use AutoCAD to design blueprints for buildings, bridges, and roads. So this is the logo of the AutoCAD application while this is the actual workspace of the AutoCAD. Next, we have the SAP 2000. It is a most popular structural analysis and design software in the civil engineering world. So, ito yung actual workspace sa SAP 2000. SAP 2000 is a civil engineering program for static analysis of structures. The word SAP is abbreviation of Structural Analysis Program. Well, the 2000 here is the first ever year when the main version of the software was released. This software is mainly used for analysis and not only for design. That is why we can use SAP 2000 for the simplest problems or to the most complex projects. Based from my research, etong SAP 2000 software application, karaniwang ginagamit siya ng mga bridge contract constructors because it is effective in bridge analysis. Why? Because this software involves ready-made template to generate the construction of the bridge and automated moving load on the bridge, phase construction of the bridge, and the large deformation in the cables. Next, we have the eTabs. eTabs is an engineering software product that caters to multi-story building analysis and design. So, it is used when we are designing or analyzing a multi-story building. It, the ultimate integrated software package for the structural analysis and design of buildings. So, this is the actual workspace in eTabs. Next, we have the AutoCAD Civil 3D. So, this software is almost similar to the AutoCAD. It is a civil design and documentation solution that supports building information modeling or BIM workflows. So, this is an example design that is made via AutoCAD Civil 3D. 
AutoCAD Civil 3D is used by civil engineers, civil designers, and other professionals to plan, to design, and manage land development, water, and transportation projects. It is also well known in civil engineering community and widely used on a variety of infrastructure projects, both large and small, such as construction area development, road engineering, river development, dams, embankments, and many others. So, itong AutoCAD Civil 3D na ito, hindi lang siya magagamit sa pag-design or sa pag-analyze sa mga buildings. It also ensures each object such as an alignment has a standard set of attributes and relationships to other objects. This allows designers to easily explore what-if scenarios. Why? It is because we can easily manipulate objects in using AutoCAD Civil 3D and each objects that we use is related to other objects. The last one is the WaterCAD, a robust and easy-to-use water distribution modeling program. So, this is an actual water distribution model via WaterCAD. It is an easy-to-use software that is reliable, resource-saving, decision support application for your water infrastructure. WaterCAD also helps us to analyze, design, and optimize water distribution systems. So, from the word water, it can only be used in water distribution systems. Let us move on to the project communication systems. It supports the coordination of a construction project by providing a joint platform to all project members for collaboration and information exchange. So, these are the top five project communication or collaboration software. First one is the Confluence. So, this is the actual screenshot upon using the Confluence app. Confluence, it is a powerful platform that focuses on team ownership and collaboration versus individual work. So, as we can see, we can have description and goals of our project, the roadmap, updates, and the project shortcuts. Next, Zoho Docs, an online file storage and management software. So, it is helpful when we want our files to be organized in, in each folder. Next is the SharePoint. Applications and desktop sharing and viewing, annotation tools, instant messaging, web slides, and whiteboards. So, dito sa SharePoint, we have the Organize. We can organize our files, we can organize our designs, and so on. And then we can share, we can share our ideas, we can share our files to our team, to our team members, or to other people outside our organization. We can discover uh, new designs, maybe discover new people. It also involves manage or we maybe we can manage our team members here manage our data then we can connect connect with other people connect with your team members and build next is the office 365 it is an integrated suite of applications include email calendar and address book that are accessed via the internet 24 7. so as we can see here we have the Microsoft Excel, Word, Skype, um, PowerPoint, Spreadsheet, Note, SharePoint, and so on. These applications included in the Office 365 is accessible 24-7, anytime, anywhere. Just be sure that you are connected with the internet. The last one is the Evernote. Provides single team workspace in with in-app discussions, knowledge, discovery, presentation, mode, and powerful searching tools. So it is uh, helpful. It is very effective when we are going to make notes. Uh, so as we can see here, we have new notes, shortcuts, all notes, notebooks. So it is all about making notes.
Next, let us move on to the Digital Construction Diary. Digital Construction Diaries range from single templates for word processors to internet-based systems with complex data structures. Simply record all site activity while on the go using the mobile app. Simple templates help all team members select the correct information and then it is store a complete record of site diaries safely in case of claims. Digital Construction Diary helps us in keeping track of conditions and events on site. If team members are using different standards and forms, it is easy to overlook things or make mistakes. That is why Digital Construction Diary is very helpful when it comes to managing our construction projects. Next, the scheduling software. Construction scheduling software is used to plan, monitor, and control project progress. The results are usually displayed in the form of a gun chart, network plan, or list. The, so these are the top mostly used scheduling softwares. We have the Microsoft Project. Okay, this is the actual workspace upon using Microsoft Project. The tool includes project scheduling features and track project status. So here we have the projects, the number of projects. We can indicate here um, the number of tasks, kung ilan na yung mga nakompletong tasks, kung ilan yung mga gagawin pang tasks, and so on. Uh, the overdue tasks. We can also see here um, the start and the due date of a specific task okay so the next one is the zoho project helps you plan your projects track work efficiently and collaborate with your team wherever they are so just like the microsoft project we can present here the beginning and the due date of our project next the fast track schedule 9 your windows project management software for organizing tracking and reporting all your project goals fast track schedule 9 helps us manage our project easily and effectively so this is helpful for both new and experienced project managers why do we need to use fast track schedule 9 it is because it will help us personally and our team as well to quickly and simply plan the project. Complete projects on time and on budget. Present goals in eye-catching schedules. So, like this, pwede na tayong maglagay dito ng mga pictures ng specific people na magawa ng task na, na naka-assign sa kanila. And then, pwede din natin kulayan yung bawat task so that mas madali natin silang ma-differentiate and then dito, meron din ditong percentage of project progress and so on it also helps us in identifying and avoiding schedule conflicts, effectively track project performance enhance collaboration and communication and demonstrate the impact of scheduled changes so the next one is the primavera p6 it is a project program and portfolio management tool that is used for planning managing and executing your project work so it is designed to handle large and small projects in a number of diverse industries such as construction, manufacturing, energy, and IT. Itong Primavera, almost the same siya dun sa software na MS Project. Ito yung logo ng Primavera P6. Next, we have the Workfront. Connect, collaborate, and execute on complex workflows from anywhere. It is a project management software that features enterprise work management, issue tracking, document management, time tracking, and portfolio management. 
So, as we can notice, itong Microsoft Project, Soho Project, Fast Track Schedule 9, Primavera P6, and Workfront, pare-parehas lamang yung kanilang purpose or yung kanilang use. Lahat sila, na magagamit natin sila sa pag-plan ng schedule, pag-monitor ng schedule, or pag-control ng progress ng ating project. Let us move on to the cost control software. Cost control softwares is based on capacity planning methods. These are the top mostly used cost control softwares. First, we have the structure. Automates job costing, payroll, work orders, purchase orders, receivables, payables, general ledger, and fixed assets for contractors. So the next one is the contractor's office. So this is the actual workspace in contractor's office. Estimating work orders, complete orders processing, job budgets, accounting, job costing, job scheduling, and labor ticket. So makikita natin ito lahat dito. Next, we have the pub works. Activity-based costing maintenance management system that manages projects, work orders, roads, bridges, facilities, and so on. It is a public works software and includes features such as billing, invoicing, compliance management, contract management, customer database, equipment maintenance, a fixed asset management, job costing, project management, service request management, and work order management. So, ito, makikita natin yung lahat dito. Year, depreciation, expiration, and so on. Meron dito ng date kung kailan ginawa, kung kailan natapos yung isang activity, quality rating, and the assessment condition. Next, we have the RS Prism. It is a project life cycle management software that delivers a dependable forecast and accurate view of project performance. It helps organizations gain control of their project while increasing predictability, minimizing risk, and improving accuracy, efficiency, and visibility. So, just like the contractor's office power works, RS Prism also includes the date of the project and the description of the project and plan the finished date started the actual finished date the also the baseline budget it's all about the budget for the construction project the last one is the synergies it appears more eye-catchy than what i have mentioned earlier so synergies job costing and project management system that helps agencies consultancies and in-house departments take control of their business it also allows us to see everything that's happening in our agency in real time from job progress and profitability to revenue forecast and capacity this is the actual uh, workspace or the actual dashboard of the synergies application so, as we can notice, cost control software applications, structure, contractor's office, pubworks, RS Prism, and Synergies, it serves the same purpose and it helps us to know how our business is doing at all times with the budget to actual income and expenses of our construction project. So, that's all everyone. Thank you.